Welcome to another episode of the Married Game Podcast. We are the voice you trust when it comes to lust. We are who you hire when she lacks desire. And if you're on the street acting like a geek, you're not going to unleash her inner freak. How do you come up with these? Um, they, I don't come up with them. They come out of me. I, this is how I picture hey. them. <laughs> it's like you're in the shower and you're like, oh, today's podcast day. I'm really excited. I need to come up with a new little funny hook. Is that what happens? I have sat down one time and wrote about 20 hooks. Oh. But the ones that actually end up making on the show are the ones that come to me typically when I'm right like in the mode. Mm. So I guess you would say without saying that I'm a genius. Wow. <laughs> You're a lyrical genius. Lyrical genius. Jack Johnson, Eminem, and Keith Yackey. Really? Lyrical genius. In your opinion. Yeah, for well, sure. I'm, 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 <laughs> hey, I'm shooting for the stars, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Well, Jesse Joy, oh, we've yes. got some news to report, <laughs> don't we? I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. Well, first of all, deepest apologies and greatest appreciation for our uh, listeners' patience as you and I have been gallivanting around. We haven't released a podcast in, in, in a minute, mm -hmm. for uh, which we are sorry. Uh, Jesse's mainly sorry, sorry. not sorry, really, because <laughs> we've been traveling and furthering yeah. our business that way. Our mobile, our mobile uh, podcast game is pretty weak. Should we take it on the road? I think if we took it on the road, <laughs> we'd have more shows. <laughs> mm. And I think the people that like our show would like to hear more. I think it would be fun to do one, like say if we're, like we were in Orlando, right? Say if we did one there, because we're like in travel mode, exciting mode. So yeah. like if we pulled one together, I meant out to of bring town. our machine in our little mic. Yeah, yeah, and I forgot. Well, that's all your fault then. It is a hundred percent my fault. <laughs> I take a full responsibility. Um, really cool concept. I want to lay a, a fresh concept on the floor right here for our people, and then from there build on it. Okay? Definitely lay it down. Will you lay it down? Um, I'm gonna lay it down. But first, before we have, we want a word from our sponsor, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Man. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, no, really, the <laughs> don't be a nerd. Spread oh, the yeah. word. Wow. I got. We so... need to make shirts. <laughs> don't be a nerd. Spread the word. Don't be a nerd. Spread the word. It's there's this concept of freedom that every time we do a live event, we just got done with our live event this last weekend, and it was first of all, it was magical. It's always magical for me because whenever you're standing in front of men saying this is how you get a certain thing that they are there for, if you don't fully believe that you really are the thing that you say you are and you know you're not it, it, it doesn't land. Mm -hmm. And you feel exposed almost immediately um, in those situations. So when I when I get ready for those, it just makes me extra sharp. It just makes me extra like I got to really be on my shit because there's an energy. Even though I'm on my shit every day, it's just it's extra. It's mm -hmm. like mm, I'm not falling asleep this time. So the thing that you and I both noticed that we want to talk a little bit about today and then I wanted to share this really fun concept was about freedom. Mhm. Mm like ultimately what our battle cry for married game is this freedom and what people see in us is people free to be and say who we are what we want what and just be <clears throat> us and be accepted for that and what i hear from a lot of guys especially when they come to live event they want to be that free as well mm -hmm. to not have their wife feel like oh you're a pervert because you you want me it's yeah. like well I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to want you why would you make me feel like a pervert? You know, so mm -hmm. these types of things. So this is the concept I want to talk about today or like really dive into with you and I today on about freedom. My take on freedom. I'll just give a little explanation on how, yeah. why I feel free or, or put it in someone else's brain over like how they could feel free. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just give a small little example. Like in our relationship, instead of saying things like, can I go here? Do you mind? Like, I don't even want to ask. Like, right? So freedom for me, like ultimate freedom, because I, I care about what you think and I love you and I want us to have the most amazing life together. But I'll say, um, 
like go out with my girlfriends, right? I'm like, are, are we free this day? Because I'd like to go out with my girlfriends. I'm just like asking logistics instead of asking permission mm -hmm. for things, right? Yeah. So that's freedom to me because I don't feel any weird way to ask for something in a way that is something that I want to do in my life. That makes me feel free. Yeah. That I don't have to like tiptoe around and be like, ah, I don't even want to ask him. He's going to say no. And like, yeah. no, like I, I'm, I want to live my full life. I want you to live your full life. So let's come together and plan for our full life. Yeah. That means freedom to me. Okay. I want to, I want to give an example and then maybe another one will sp spark up in your mind and we mm -hmm. can keep painting pictures Ooh, of freedom. More more. Yeah. yeah. Because there's, I've got at least six. Awesome. I know. And you've got probably 27 because I know you and I know, <laughs> I know the way you it. think about <laughs> shit. So, um, guy came into our program, pretty new into the program. And, I, you know, I'm as, as straightforward talking in our program, even more so than maybe I even am on, I'm on the podcast. Like I, I'm, I, I always tell guys, you, you can change is something you do with your hair color. Like, I don't give a fuck about change. I want you to be transformed, like mm -hmm. to go to a butterfly and to never go back to that caterpillar like ever again. Like Trevor, even in even in this December when we were like really like at each other's nerves, me not showing up as a partner, it wasn't, I didn't go back to Trevor. No. It was mm -mm. almost like a, a cocky, a confident one. dick ass. It was like a dick I Trevor. should name that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that guy pops up here and there. Ego <laughs> yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. You fucking Mr. <laughs> and that definitely was not the old you in our old relationship. No, it was, no, no. It was a newer you yeah. version, actually. Yeah, it was, a, it was like, well, who's this guy? Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so what I talk about constantly with the guys is, men, if you want to get the ex back or the sex back, we got to get you back. And what that specifically means is your backbone and your ball sack back. So there's a guy, he, he typically makes it home around 615 or so. And an old friend he used to work with hit him up and goes, Hey man, you want to grab a couple beers after work? So he goes, grabs a couple beers and he's home 635 645 and on his way home he's like dreading like his wife texts him hey everything good and he goes yeah yeah i'm fine i'm on my way home and he was dreading like what should he say okay mm. this, this is why the guy this is why this is why a particular <clears throat> group of guys sign up for married game mm -hmm. because they're in fear of yeah. what their wife's going to say and he goes okay so i'm like well maybe i just said hey my we we did we had something really cool at work and my boss may just go celebrate okay it's like oh god damn dude how big of a pussy do you got to be to say that yeah and he and, and then he thought maybe oh maybe i just uh worked late but he'll she'll smell the beer on my breath and like oh i can't and he's working through all these things and he's like literally he goes what the fuck would keith do Keith wow. would like no way say any of this shit. Keith would just be like, WWKD. hey, WWKD, WWKD. <laughs> <laughs> but what was so cool is he went home. Yeah. And she goes, oh, what happened? He goes, hey, I ran into a friend uh, of an old friend from work. Went and had a couple of beers. No, everything's great. I'm home. I'm ready to do what you do. And she, you know what she said? Mm. Cool. How is he? Like, oh, my God, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Wow. And he was like, so I asked him, I said, so her feeling like your mom who did that to you? Yeah, who caged you? You, mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So this freedom is not just a freedom to be like, I want to tell my wife what my sexual fantasy is and her go, oh, that sounds fucking awesome. When do we do it? Yeah. It's the freedom starts way back in, just tell the truth. Wow. The freedom starts when you go, no, no. I, but it's back to your permission. And that's almost the exact identical situation. But this one's just played out in one of our clients' lives. Yeah. And Powerful. he put himself in that cage. He put himself in that cage. That's not free either. When you and do it to yourself, yes. not even someone else did that to him. So, and, and he goes, she's just so nice. She would like, like, he is like so many guys where they don't share their real opinion about something in a non-emotional, non-threatened, desperate way. Mm -hmm. They only know how to share it that way, which is total combat language. Mm -hmm. And so their partner gets combative as well. And they're like, I wonder why this isn't working. We even had a, 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 one of our beautiful clients that over the weekend was like, oh, I used to do this totally a passive aggressive way. And like, yeah. it was like, I, now I know it. Now I see it. Yeah. And I was just so tired of that. So there we go again. Mm -hmm. Freedom for what? Freedom to be able to say what you want. And to know, 
hey, it's not wrong to want this. That was another thing we noticed. Yeah. Okay, so back to you. you another uh, uh, another thing of freedom that came up for you while I was mentioning these? Well, the sexual one def- definitely comes up because I want to feel free to, to explore whatever I want, and I want you to, too, as well. Because like I said before, it's like we're living our own life. Like, I, I want my life to be good in everything that I want. I want yours to be the same way, but I want to do it together, too, and all the yeah. things. So feeling free to share things sexually is yeah. definitely a huge huge one yeah it's being able to share hey this is what i want this yeah, is because a lot like. of people just suppress those feelings they're like well i'm married now i can't like do things or i can't ask my wife that like you know yeah well, why not it, that okay that's another thing mm-hmm. and another thing and another there's a probably a ton it well there are there is but as we continue to keep talking about them um there's, there's different examples where guys see if they are free or not free in their marriage. And mm-hmm. usually when they realize they're trapped is a lot of times when they'll reach out to us and they're like, Hey, we don't know what to do next. And that can be the guy that's totally in the dump. And he's like, dude, I haven't had sex for a long time. Or it can be the guy literally. And we have a lot of really high performing clients that come in. They're like, I'm as far as I know how to get where I got to go. Mm. So actually I don't know how to ask for sex in a way that makes me feel empowered i don't know how to do it i'm getting sex but it's the way i'm getting it doesn't make me i don't feel like it just i feel not free and how to be able to ask for sex Mm -hmm. so that's another one Mm -hmm. so what do you think has to be involved for a wife to feel free enough where a husband feels free. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Because a lot of times guys won't say anything because they think their wives are going to judge them, yeah. be mad at them, mm-hmm. or be like, huh, wait, what? Well, I think all the things that we teach um, have to be in place somewhat to feel so free that you have such a leg to stand up to ask for with confidence what you want, with no backstory, with no pouting, with all that. So meaning like you're you're doing all the things that make you feel and are amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Like when, say if we haven't, you haven't taken me out on a date in a long time, or you haven't even put an intention in with me to spend time with me, then you're going to ask for something. Typically it's sex, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like that you have such a leg to stand on to be asking for extra things when you haven't done the work. Isn't that interesting that you made sex an extra thing? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, where did that condition? Well, I think uh, I think um, when you're talking about relationships, when you say when he's asking for sex, that's oh, why yeah. I just put it to that. Yeah. Oh, but so don't twist my words. I didn't. I just repeated sex. them back to you. Well, it's asking something for her. It is something that it she has something. to participate no in, question. and hopefully happily, right? But yeah. when I feel like you haven't given me attention, that I don't want to give you attention. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, sex, you're, but you're it's talking, attention. It's basically it's like the law of reciprocity. Like if you're taking from my bank account, me. Mm-hmm. And you just keep taking, taking, taking. You have yeah. no deposits. Yeah. Then I feel like I don't really want to hang out with you. And and it's because that's when a guy starts to create a pattern of neglect. Right. Once she sees a pattern of neglect, and she goes, "Well, fuck, dude, I'm feeling neglected as shit, and yet you still want me to keep giving for you." Giving. And it's like I want to give to you, but I don't. There it is. Here it is. People feel guilty to ask for what they want. A lot of women don't even know how to ask for what they yeah. want. Because if, if I came to you and like, I'm just buy me this, buy me this, buy me this, when I haven't even like spent time with you, you'd be like, what the hell? It's kind of the same thing. And we've talked about it in a lot of different ways, but it is like when you're doing your thing and you, we've had our dates and you're, you're working out and you're like being the I'm perfect like man. Yeah. And I'm showing up in my way and I'm doing all the things like I don't have no weirdness to ask of anything. I'm like, yeah. I want this. Okay, cool it's separate Whatever from it hanging out that people put those two together too right like or sex right it's like uh, well i hung out with you now give me sex but it's like but that should be separate we should always be hanging out right we shouldn't and then sex just comes it's it, a natural that's byproduct. Sh- it should be yeah. separated but it, it is somewhat put together mm. yeah well the freedom to speak openly about sex without an agenda. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what a whole a f- backstory, what a right? Freedom that is, though. Mm-hmm. Hey, you can bring up anything to me, and I don't get immediately defensive. Yeah. And I just go, okay, tell me more. I'm, I'm now I'm Inspector Gadget, or <laughs> oh well, my god, whatever the guy looking for clues. That ego's a bitch, isn't it? Oh, 
Uh, fucking ego. It's good and bad. It's, I know. It's, it's, it is what it, it is, man. It does get a little more bad. It, 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 tends, it tends to make <laughs> learning a little harder. Mm -hmm. It certainly makes learning a little harder. Yeah. Uh, it makes betting on yourself a little easier. Mm -hmm. And and the truth is, is I think the guys maybe with a little more ego tend to win a little more because they're willing to bet on themselves. And because of their ego, they're willing to work hard enough. I wonder to if live. they lose just the, as much. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, w no one's done that test. And nobody knows who's really winning or losing because we're all looking at people's fucking gift wrapping. Because if you lose, you kind of win because you learn something too. Well, and there's, that's where you learn all the fucking good shit. What the hell are we so doing? So <laughs> what are we doing? We're just winning, dude. Okay. Because um, that really is the truth. It's, I know. It's all the shit that you and I have been through has caused us to learn a lot of things. And I've probably just interviewed a lot more naked ladies than most men. So I've got interviewed. a real... Interviewed. Mm, uh, yeah. I, I like dude, that. Dude, I've interviewed every girl I've <laughs> fucked. Did you actually? I mean, you had to, right? To know if you're like wanting no, to. Like, no, I'm talking. No, no, I'm talking after the deed. What did you ask? I now I'm interested. Listen, it's not like we had sex and I went and got my reporter hat and my my notepad. I'm like, <laughs> all right, so at 9:05 when I did this, what did you do? No, it's it's because this conversation of female and male attraction is something that first of all girls love talking about i mean it's mm. like what every the, the, it's what all the reality shows are about it's mm. the bachelorette mm. they mm -hmm. love the who's this who's that who's that so when you get to a point where you're having sex with somebody it's as open and vulnerable and as connected as you can be to a human being damn near Even the talking after is the pretty well, open one. Okay, so you're laying there naked, and you're talking about. First of all, so you say like, "How was this for you?" That's no, that where the interview no, no, starts. No, 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 no. I never. I don't even talk about the sex. Oh, no, huh? it's not even about the sex. Mm -hmm. It's about. It's a woman. This is what I've learned. This is this is just how it works. And if somebody's had more sex with more than uh, a couple hundred people, and they have a different opinion, I'm open to listening if you haven't then listen up because you're going to learn something going to learn today you're going to learn today most of the time the reason why women wanted to have sex with me because this was a topic of conversation that we would dive and in deep into sex attraction ah uh. Why do women like what? Hey, what are you really attracted to? And then get into it and realize a woman goes, fuck, I had no choice about anything I've been attracted to. I can only connect the dots backwards. I can't tell why my fucking, yeah. I don't know why I get tingly when I talk to this guy. All my girlfriends say he's ugly, but for me, that guy does it for me. It's yeah. like, wait, okay, er, rewind that. What happened next? Boom, boom, boom. And so you know me, I've been king of curiosity for the longest time. Especially about this. Especially about this yeah. topic. So we're laying there naked and I'm asking questions about, okay, well, what happened here? <laughs> when when did when did you know you were going to have sex with me? Like, I fucking love this wow. shit. So, so I've been weaving all this information behind the scenes in a very open, naked format with hundreds of women. Yeah. So it's like, well, how do you know this? Well, how could, if I didn't figure this out after that many reps, I would be the biggest dummy on planet Earth. Yeah. So I've just interviewed well, more. Well, you worry about the long, long term. The game. long term attraction. <laughs> well, dude, I did I, clearly. The biggest I, dummy on Earth. I was the biggest dummy on <laughs> yeah, Earth. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes this story so fun is how dumb I became. You know, another. And how many guys are this dumb? Oh, Still. I know. You know, Ugh. another thing about freedom I just thought about Tell me. is the free that we have everything out in the open. Mm. You and me. That's free. Oh, yeah. 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 We're not, you don't have to lie about how many people you have slept with. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. It's, yeah. It's fine. It's whatever. Yeah. I already know. Actually, when we first started dating, yeah. they were like, did you know he's been, the, did you know, like all the things? Oh, or, yeah. I people, like, your yeah. friends at first I would tell yeah, you yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Of course I know. I was talking to Jonathan before the guys came in this weekend and, and I said hey did you learn any of this from your dad he's like fuck no dude mm. I said when every guy comes in the married game and after they watch our modules which is learning our psychology our philosophy the the our techniques, vocabulary our vocabulary yeah. the the terminology mm -hmm. all the things that of how we look at it and the words we use to describe what's happening yeah 
without fail, all of them are like, dude, I got a, I got a new set of eyes. I can't unsee. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so guess what? Nobody else is saying this shit. There's a lot of like uh, down river sayings or concepts that you can tell they've come from this giver energy, taker energy. Like there's, there's a lot of new concepts that entered into the world when we started really saying our truth. Yeah. Right. And they're good concepts. It's not, it's just the way we word them, but it's just truth that's been around for fucking ever. Mm-hmm. You're right. People like givers, they hate takers. No shit. Oh, yeah. well, that's what you became in a marriage. Oh, fuck. These guys are brilliant. Not really. It's just the truth that's been mm-hmm. the truth forever. That being said, what I thought was so interesting is how very few men actually understand how any of this works. And it feels fun to be on the front line to like literally share. That's why I love calling it the gospel of married game. Mm. I'm like, hello, my blind sir. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to introduce you to <gasps> boom. And they're like, holy fuck, dude. No wonder my wife hated me. Yeah. How did she actually stick around me that long? That's what I wondered. Dude. <laughs> yes. That's true. That's, that's what we are doing. Yeah. And you know what? There's even good husbands out there that their wife wished they had a little bit of game, like a little bit of swag. Absolutely. But but I'm just not, you say that because that's what you love. Absolutely. A but, little but I, bit. I, Every I, woman wants I that. I think there's a lady named, fuck, I don't want to say any girl's name and they <laughs> think I'm talking about them. Herelda. Wow. Herelda. I don't know a Herelda. Okay. There's a Herelda out there that's just plain. Her husband's just a plain dude. But she would like him to know a little bit of something. Mm-hmm. Also, we need to make a public announcement. Oh, if any of you guys are connected to Bravo TV in any way, <laughs> shape, or form, Jesse loves the, what do they call it? The, uh, Summer House. Summer House. I love all the reality shows. S- Summer House. Is there another house? Winter House. Yeah. And and all the houses. Well, there's a bunch of houses. Yep. Where they put these people in there, they're single and they're trying to hook up, and they some of them, they, they, there's very few of them have actual game, but it's what there's couples that are on the verge of divorce, and their problems would be the easiest mm-hmm. problem in the world to fix. Like, it's a two out of ten difficulty when guys come into Mary game when they have that. It's like, oh fuck, dude. But they feel like at the end, just because it feels so so bad to be right in that spot if anybody knows those people from summer house winter house or whatever help them reach out to us uh especially what's the blonde's name amanda amanda and what's her husband's name kyle kyle amanda and kyle we're watching the show right now i don't know if we're what season is this a local season yeah that's a that's a new season current new season my guy they're about to film in the summer again you're you uh, I don't know if you're going to see this. I hope you see this. Your marriage is, first of all, you're almost at the end. She's been planning her exit. Not necessarily, but her heart is so distant from you. Dude, you could get it back such, it, so fucking easy. So easy, man. But you're further down the trail than than you know, and you could turn this thing around. So reach out to us. We want to help you. Okay. Public spot. That's our, that's our news from our Bravo <laughs> team. Um Okay, so what other freedom things are there? Don't you tell me. Okay, freedom to be who you are yeah. and not necessarily try to conform or try and make the other person conform to who they are, but say, no, I, I like who you, I like you for you. I don't want a conformed version. Yeah, what's one of your things that you tell the guys? Like, did I dim my shine today to fit somebody else or my wife? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a big one. Did I edit or audit yeah. my shine? Did my, it's like, did I... Did I not say my real truth because I was afraid? Mm-hmm. But a free man just says, "Hey, this is this is this what is I me. believe. Mm-hmm. Like, if you if you like it, cool. If not, that's not a problem." Yeah, that is ultimate freedom. You don't even have to say, "I don't give two fucks." You just literally just don't give two fucks. Mm-hmm. You just like you 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 so don't give two fucks. You don't even have to tell anybody you don't give two I fucks because right? like, why would you? Hey, no, I'm good. Yeah. I feel like the most calm guys that are willing just to walk away from bullshit situations are the actual don't give a fuck guys. Well, they know their value. That's yeah, why. There you go. Yeah. And, and that's f- attractive. And what? Because they're free to walk away. They're free to be them, to walk away, to know their value. So mm-hmm. the road to this freedom for a man, from what I've seen in working with the guys that we work with, and we've got 
really well-to-do private clients and we've got guys that are entrepreneurs either starting their business or building their business or going through different phases of their business. They're stressed out by building the business because that takes a lot of energy. It's a, a, a creation. Um, they're stressed out because the kids all need a piece of them and they want them. And frankly, he feels bad if he's not giving it to them. That's like built into a dad. Mm -hmm. He's got a wife that needs to feel seen, her and loved and appreciated and respected so that she continues to want to show up and feel like actually loved. He's got his own health to like actually be vigilant on and go, yo, I, I can't become this fat fuck. Mm -hmm. He's got to be thinking in terms and ways of how does he create an environment for his family, for them not only to grow, but to also have fun. And, you know, fun usually leads to a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. And yet at the core of that, if he feels guilty for wanting that, it like, stifles almost all of his creative production wow and you see that mm -hmm. and so it's like it's not hey do you think your life would be a little better if your wife like loved you more it's it's not here's the big distinction about this and this is why like the freedom thing is so big to me at this point and i always seen it very very differently more nuanced if you say my life would be so much better if my wife did this you're not wrong but you are wrong because you're putting emphasis on her mm -hmm. whereas the first reaction should be my wife doesn't really support me that much i wonder if i'm really that supportable like looking inward first you start looking at yourself yeah. and you start first before you point the finger yeah yeah and you start to go well, what if I could talk freely enough about, oh man, I've really fucked up and be free enough to hear from her what's really going on without being defensive and actually be free enough to look objectively at your tape of your life mm -hmm. and go, some of that shit's really disgusting. I'm fucking embarrassed. That takes putting that ego aside to hear it and to look inward without you. Like, no, I'm fucking amazing. You got to put that ego down. Yeah. It's because it's almost like, like when you, what I could say without a shadow of a doubt, I think I'm fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think I am um, fucking some stuff up amazingly well mm -hmm. <laughs> in the same breath. Sure. That took a long time, I think, for me to admit. Like, to genuinely go, no, in this area, I would pick me. In this area, I would not trust me. Like, not so that, it's just, I'm bad at the skill. Yeah. Because it's hard to look at, to feel amazing with still having, uh, you know, things that you can work on. Yeah. So you thought that you couldn't say that in the same breath without being completely amazing still. Yeah. Still being human. And being really happy with our marriage and then also going, no, but there's another level. Yeah. I think, do you think it's just entrepreneurs that are built that way? Or people that, it's, it's like a freedom seeking thing. I think it does have a huge piece of that, like to look inward is something a lot of entrepreneurs do to get better. Yeah. Like regular people on the street, I don't think want to do that as much because it's really difficult. Well, I notice if I talk to an entrepreneur and I tell him about the opportunity we have to grow every area of your life, an entrepreneur goes... Dude, if, if I invest in my piece of this and me on this, dude, I would show up to, it, like, if, if you had an upgraded version of you show up to your business, what do you think would happen to your business? It would upgrade. Yeah. Like, that. that's so obvious. Mm -hmm. But to a person that's on a fixed income, meaning like a salary or, or like yeah. in a, you know, a different type of situation where they collect the check, they don't write the check, mm -hmm. they don't see the value as much as the other guy mm -hmm. like they go hmm and i think what it is is it's this incremental approach um there's just not this lever when i say they're more like i have to each step takes a certain amount of time i got to do a certain amount of thing whereas an entrepreneur goes i can leverage the shit out of a lot of things to get this thing i'm gonna still have to take the steps but rather than go slow 
I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, the, I'm going more, all the in. more energy I put into this thing, the more energy comes out of yeah. it. Yeah. And, and they um, want the results, let's go. And that, the I think the other thing too is when you are so used to realizing that the results of your life, meaning the house that you live in, the cars that you drive, the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, the places that you vacation, the, all of those things are just a reflection of how much you've decided to show up in those areas of your life. That's it. Yep. Like, and it's, it is what it is, but there's like this itch within us as entrepreneurs, as people who crave this freedom to be able to build and create the life that we want. It's normally why almost every entrepreneur gets into business. And I just don't know if they realize that that same drive to be a free entrepreneur can be used to have a free, free marriage, meaning a marriage free of, um, Here's the other piece of the freedom. Now when you become this guy, you, like when I come home, it's peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's quiet. Even if there's kids running around, it's like we're at peace. Like there's a oneness. Hey, how are like you? Like we giggle at the, all the loud screaming cuteness. It's the team. Instead of like, what the, why are they so loud? Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. they're living their life too. Yeah. It's peaceful. It, but the freedom comes from I'm free now of certain things. I'm free of having to go, oh, my God, I've lied to Jesse for so much. I hope she doesn't find out. No, here it is. Here's everything. You don't like it? All right. Well, you can cash out anytime you want. But this is me. Same way for you. So when you're free, you, you said it, man. Uh, and it's really like that concept of the most powerful person in the room is the one that has nothing to hide. Wow, why is that so true? Mm -hmm. It just is, but why? Nothing to hide. You know who you are. Yeah, I'm just up front. Here it is. I think it's because there's you're not afraid of anybody finding anything, so therefore you kind of are like, and you could thrive better that way. I think so. Mm -hmm. So you get free, you, you you free yourself. The big one was being able to say what they want and not feel guilty. The religious folks tend to struggle with that one. So this freedom comes a step at a time. And I think every single step, it's, it, it comes from a man going, I'm going to go a little more all in and really look to this. And the voices on the outside of what people think start to dim down. And the voice on the inside starts to really take wow. take take a, a volume up. And they go, I got to listen to this one. Because ultimately, this is the one that I'm responsible for. Can't get rid of this one. The yeah. inside one. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, That's it's really it. it's really hard to. I mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think but we we tend to fall asleep a lot. That was another thing That's that was one. reminded yeah. again. Men, probably women too. Yeah. I, I don't know a lot about women and in terms of in, like I go in phases for sure. Yeah, but it's like having your head in the game. I feel like maybe it's different for women. Um, in the sense of most of the women I know are like raising kids and, and spending time at home. So it's, you can't almost ignore it because they're always like, mom, 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 yeah. mom, mom, mom. <laughs> they're so reminding like, you all the time. You're constantly there. Yeah. But as men hunt the buffalo and want to feel wanted at home and feel loved, there's a, um, there's this cry of freedom in the one and yet they fall asleep on the other hand. What happens to you when you fall asleep? Like, let's just say, take me, for example, when you fall asleep with me, what You know what would happen? be better is if you tell me what you perceive happens on the I outside. I want to hear you first, because I already know what happens, and I tell you all the time, I'm like, this is the pattern, this is what happens. Okay. Do you use that tone? Because I probably don't hear if you use that tone. <laughs> <laughs> and then we find more. Here's the tone you don't want to use. Yeah. No. Um, I love that tone sometimes. It's no. My um, what do I? It's. Like, what happens for you? And then what do you notice happen with us? With you specifically or for yeah, me? Yeah, let's just take me. Because I know it's different for your business, right? It's different for. With Jovi, it's different. It's just different in, for our relationship. I'm trying to think of what what the the simplest answer like the the core mm -hmm. answer and it's probably you just don't probably feel my full presence yeah 
you start to like, hey, he's not all the way here. Like he's here, but not really. And then what kind of happens with our relationship? Well, if I'm not all the way there, it starts to, it, the connection starts to fade. Mm-hmm. starts to, to, it's, um, the signal's still there, but it's, you're not hearing all the words. If yeah. I was to use a radio analogy. Yeah. Like for me, when that happens is I, I feel disconnected. Then I start to, I feel that I start to get like real naggy about things mm-hmm. that aren't that important. Mm. Things that I've worked hard to not feel frustrated about that are just like your crumbs or if you're a couple minutes late, like things that shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. I start to pick apart. Then I start to get angry at you. And then we start to fight about things mm. when we lose that connection. That's when you fall asleep. Mm. Then I don't feel like top priority or even on your list of priorities. Mm. And that doesn't feel good for me. So then I feel sad inside and then I start to feel lonely mm. and then nobody wants to feel lonely in a relationship. Yeah. So it's like a whole host of things. Yeah. It's not very good. So right? I try to stay on it. But yeah. I also try to do my part and remind you because you're human, you know, like I'm feeling a little disconnected. What do you I, do I need when a little you romance. fall asleep? What do you do when oh, you Oh, I don't. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> let's, let's hear about your... Let's f- take our relationship. No, let's... Well, yeah, you and then how do you notice it in you and then how does it spill into me? Because, because I, I don't do the day-to-day business... I'm not pulled away so far from the home life Mm. that I don't think I fall asleep as much, but yes, I'll tend to feel exhausted with giving my energy to you, to Joby, the animals, the house, you know? So I like to, you know, have like 24 hours away Mm -hmm. to come back. Then I'm like, okay, you know, invest more time. But when I fall asleep, You know, I I feel sometimes that my guilt, like mom guilt or wife guilt kind of comes up in me where I'm like, I feel like I haven't done enough for you guys mm. now. So I don't know if you notice as much as I, when I catch it, then I'm like, ah, oh, we, you know, we haven't had the intentional time together. So I try to say it to you like, oh, I think, you know, let's have a, a lunch date. When do you have time mm. situation? I don't know if you feel it as much, but I know Jovi will start to be like, you know, we haven't hung out or... I miss you, so I'll, I I know the cues, I think. Mm. Or she, if she's like, I miss you, I'm like, oh, well, let's hang out. Like, oh, crap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, instead of being proactive about it. I like that. I, I'd Do you agree feel with... me fall asleep? Uh, it's not that I feel you fall asleep, but I know when you're awake. Yeah, when I'm really like... That sounds like a good country song. <laughs> I don't know when you fall asleep, oh but gosh. I know when you're awake. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Dude, so. That was good. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a new single coming out <laughs> on our Provocateur Press album. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I don't know when you fall asleep, but I know when you're awake. Yeah. So. You gonna call State Farm and talk to a guy named Jake? Oh, wow. <laughs> what were we doing right before the podcast? Alligators. <laughs> Boa constrictors, what? pythons, and snakes. Okay, go ahead. What? <laughs> anyways. You're in anyways. anyways. Okay, I got a concept before, as we close out. It's a closing concept. Let's you close ready? it out. Are we ready to close it out? I think so. Should we close it out? I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to close it out. That, er, that, right, that could be a mistake. <laughs> You're making me hot right. in my jacket. All right, I know. All right, go jump in a lake. All right. <laughs> okay, bake me a cake. <laughs> Hit your head with a rake. Wow. All right, one more take. No, I'm just kidding. For Pete's sake. <laughs> no. All right, here we go. The concept is this. <laughs> Oh, little, oh, she thinks we're done because we're laughing. Nuts. What are little what's or nuts thinks? Go back to bed. Go lay down. You're fine. You're beautiful. All right. The, the concept of learning someone's love language and applying it before you ask your wife to learn your love language and apply it to you. Here's what I'm telling the guys. You probably can learn your life's love language. You just ask her what's important to mm-hmm. her and she'll tell you. Hey, do you like when we spend quality time where I'm fully present and, and, and you, f- you know that I'm all about you? 
And she'll be like, no, I just like it when you buy me gifts and <laughs> touch my pussy. I was like, okay. Wow. Well, I guess then your physical touch and a, a, a gifts love. Okay, perfect. Go do what she, like overboard for like three weeks. Couple reasons. Number one. You have to get used. To, you're going to learn a lot if you say, "I'm going to the next 21 days. I'm going to show up in a meaningful way to show my wife that I love her in a way that she will feel loved." First of all, she probably hasn't felt it for 21 days straight because after the first two or three days, you're like, "Oh, that's probably not going to last very long," right? Yep. Because that's typical thing. So first of all, she gets to feel, "Wow, this actually feels good every day. This person loves me in a way that wants me to be felt love." Wow, fuck yeah, that's cool. Secondly. You start to learn a lot of things. You start to get more creative. You start to have to anticipate. You have to look forward things. You have to look at things. You start to become much more aware of the person who you're actually with in a way that if you're not invested in that way, you don't know. That's hot. And and, and that is really hot because mm-hmm. somebody feels seen, known, heard, and understood. Like, oh, this motherfucker knows I'm going to come down and get this shake at this time. Or this motherfucker yeah. knows I'm going to need this at this time. Or holy shit. You know what I mean? Yep. The b- greatest example of that for me, I could tell you, is like when you, when you get fraps and sticks, back when I was eating fraps and sticks, like that would be the thing. You'd be like, oh, this is special. I know this will just make his heart like high five mine. Like you'd come home and you just had an inkling for it and you're like, by any chance, do we have any fraps and sticks? I go in the fridge. Yeah. You're like, ah, yeah. But that for you has <laughs> got to feel like we're in the lottery. Cause I it's love like, doing that yeah, stuff. That, Anticipating. Okay, so That's the, why I like it done to me too. All right, so you start. You have to start doing that after yep. for twenty one days. You start to re. But what then? Thirdly, that gets you into the habit where you start to realize. Wait a second. This actually doesn't take as much extra thought and planning. It just takes a minimal amount of pause. Sixty seconds on the clock. How can I make Jesse feel loved in a mm-hmm. way that's meaningful to her today? Mm-hmm. Not that it's going to take sixty seconds to pull off, but sixty seconds to think through. To be intentional about it. Yeah. What? What? What, yeah. what could I do today? How, how could I make her feel loved in a special way? What would I have to do? What would that mean? I know that she likes quality time and acts of service. I wonder if I could pull off either of those today in a way that might surprise her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Mm-hmm. Well, when you start thinking that way, you start to put your focus and attention on those things. You start to become that guy. Mm-hmm. That's what a provocateur is. Nailed it. Then it earns you the right. And I know three weeks might sound like a really short time um, in terms of earning right for what I'm about ready to say. But I can tell you, you got to at least get three weeks under your belt. Yeah, it might least. take a little longer, but mm-hmm. three weeks, at least you can show yourself, hey, man develop a standard of looking at your wife and going, how does she want to feel loved? So what happens is because you now are the leader in this, you've earned the right to influence her and show her doesn't, she starts to go, wow, I feel so loved by this guy. Mm -hmm. And then you can start to teach her, Hey, it feels amazing, right? That's how every human feels when their love language is spoken to them. And then you can start to show her and she'd be like, I want to do that. Normally, a wife who loves her husband still, Mm -hmm. without being all the way checked out, will just see what he's doing and start to one-up him with love like that. That's what a wife will want to do. Is that good? (sighs) Sounds good. Yeah, but they don't all. No, that's not all. Yeah, no, I know you didn't say all, but I all said all. Who's still all in, checked in, not checked out. Yeah, it's... um, we have something that the guys say at the live event. They learn it, and it's I am all in how much all I have. Mm-hmm. And they're not saying it because they're all in a married game. They're not saying it because they're all in on me or all in on you or all even all in on our philosophy. They're saying I'm all in on me. Mm-hmm. They're saying I'm all in. That's hot, too. I'm all in on, like, dude, my marriage has to be fucking excellent or I don't want my name associated with it. Most people don't even look at real relationships like that. Mm-hmm. So here we are setting them free to be able to think through it. Freedom. Freedom. I heard an American Eagle in the back. <laughs> You're sounding like a, uh, the game centipede. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't whistle. No, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, 
There you have it. Don't be a nerd. Spread the word. And if you are a business owner, an entrepreneur, or your money is dependent upon you making it, like going out and killing the buffalo, and you want to learn how to up your game with your wife so that you can be free to ask for what you want, to give her what she wants, to have peace, love, joy, rather than strife, heartache, and all the bullshit that comes around with a fucked up marriage, well... Head to marriedgame.com, and we would love to help you there. We've got some retreats coming up, which are going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think we're going to do an elite-level game. For those of you guys who have great marriages, but you want to take it to the next level, I'm thinking about doing a uh, a private event. No film, no recorders, no nothing, and just teaching the highest-level psychology of how a woman's minds work because... Um, our private client list is like very adept at what they're doing and yet they come to us for some very interesting stuff and I think that that would be a fun place to to have them all in one room and show them some stuff what do you think I love it yeah here for it we're here for all of it there's so much game that you guys need and we are going to give it to you you gonna get it you gonna get it you gonna get it you gonna get it all right keep crushing it that shit's contagious Boom.